Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reading Matthew chapter 5 out of the New Living Translation Bible. So if you have this version of the Bible, then go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 5 and we will get started on this. This is the Sermon on the Mount. So chapter 5. One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish this purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, Unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, God didn't come to do away with the law of Moses. Instead, he came to fulfill it. So, that's why we don't sacrifice animals anymore like how they did in the Old Testament, like in Moses' day. Any time that they would sin, they had to, like, kill a lamb or a ram or a sheep or something. And that's what the, um, the priest would do then. But now we don't have to do that. Thank God we don't. Because Jesus is our final sacrifice. He did it once, and he did it for all. And the Pharisees, in chapter 20, where, where Jesus says, Unless your righteousness, righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, 
you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So the, the teachers and the Pharisees, they always thought that they were better than everybody else. And they would put heavy burdens on all of the citizens. And they wanted them to continue to do sacrifices. And they came up with like all of these laws and stuff. Yet they were the ones that was not tithing like they should. They weren't feeding the widows and the poor like they should. They just put all of these laws and traditions on the citizens when they themselves weren't even able to uphold it or abide by it themselves. So how are you going to be a teacher if you're not leading by an example? And that's where Jesus came in and he always did lead by example of how we're supposed to be. Which again comes down to the fruit of the Spirit that Jesus is all of the fruits of the Spirit and that is how we're supposed to walk in is in the fruit of the Spirit of Jesus. Moving on to verse 21. You have heard that our ancestors were told, You must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. When you are the, on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to an officer, and you will be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. So, basically, this whole um, verse 21 to verse 26 is talking about being angry with somebody, and we should just... We shouldn't sin in our anger, and we should quickly get over our anger with somebody else. You have heard the commandment that says, You must not commit adultery. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your eye... Even your good eye causes you to lust. Gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into hell. If you have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. You have also heard that our ancestors were told, you must not break your vows. You must carry out the vows you make to the Lord. But I say, do not make any vows. Do not say by heaven, because heaven is God's throne. And do not say by the earth, because the earth is his footstool. And do not say by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king. Do not even say by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I want. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. So Jesus knows that we're already going to be backing out of our promises, our swears, any of our vows that we make. A lot of times 
we mean good by them, but not everybody keeps their promises. Not everybody keeps their swears and their guarantees and vows for whatever reason it may be. And then some people are very faithful at keeping their vows on anything, but something may happen. You may get into a car wreck and you never did fulfill your promise that you made to somebody. So that's what Jesus is talking about here is just let it be a simple yes or a no. We don't have to swear or anything like that to get our point across. You have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, offer the other cheek also. If you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat too. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. I also feel like what I get from this is Jesus is always teaching us to be a better person. He's always teaching us to grow in our faith and our patience and stuff. And I notice this a lot in my life as well. Um, like anytime that there's a test brought my way that somebody really makes me mad, well, how are you going to react to them? Are you just going, are you going to argue back with them and then wind up sinning and saying cuss words and stuff? Or maybe even getting into an actual fight with somebody? Or are you just going to stand the test and let them say whatever to you? And even if they hit you, then let it be so. Um, I'm not saying, you know, just stand there and be a doormat, but I feel like not only is this teaching about revenge on people, but we know at the end of the day that vengeance is the Lord's. Um, he does repay everybody for <sighs> sins and stuff. Um, always in a loving way, though, to get us to realize that we really need to rely on the Lord more. Like if we have anger issues, we need to be taking that to the Lord instead of taking it out on the person that made us angry or the situation that made us angry or whatever. So the last little bit here, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in Heaven is perfect, which that kind of goes with what I was talking about earlier. So, it's hard. It can be hard to pray for somebody who persecute you, per persecutes you or, you know, anything who's just out to do evil against you. We know that that is the tricks of the enemy, um, the tricks of the devil. And we are to just love that person and just show Jesus through us. We are to always be a light in this world, in the salt of the earth for other people so that they can come to Jesus too. Because we cannot rely on ourselves. we got to rely on Jesus for everything in life, from the most simple things to the greatest things. <sighs> always think like Jesus and act like Jesus. So I want to turn the page back. Um, it says, Jesus answers life essential questions. This is at the bottom of my Bible, which I'm reading from the Jesus Centered Bible, which is an NLT Bible. So Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 through 20, which was talking about the teaching about the law. Um, it says, essential question, what is right and wrong? 
The Pharisees have supercharged the quest for what is right and wrong and made it into a kind of extreme competition. They have taken the basics of the law that God delivered to them, ways of relating to Him and to each other, and exploded that simple outline into hundreds and hundreds of tiny rules and regulations designed to guarantee righteousness. Then here, Jesus says that unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of God. And then, through the rest of Matthew 5, he drives home his point by comparing common standards for what's right and wrong to the standard he sets. He's saying it's essentially impossible to re- live a righteous life by working harder at it. Our solitary hope for living righteously is to allow the only righteous presence in the universe to live in us, to live through us. We will know right and wrong not when we try harder to meet God's standards of righteousness, but when we yield ourselves to Jesus, who will help us to live righteously from the inside out. And that is true. Every day we've got to say our prayers and every day we've got to think like Jesus and act like Jesus. Um, But it can be hard. It can be easier over time, but it's also harder over time altogether, all in one bundle. Um, Some people are hard to love and but that's what we're called to do. It's it's a constant challenge each and every day, but it will be worth it in the end when we all get to heaven. Um, that's all the reading that I'm going to be doing today. Chapter 5 was pretty lengthy, and I really do hope that you got a blessing out of this and that you learned something. Um, and I hope that you all have a blessed week ahead of you and I thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you stick around for the next videos to come in the future. Thank you again. See you next time.